This is Farm Journal's Margie Fisher. I'm with Farm Journal field agronomist Ken Ferry. Ken, you've had a lot of big crowds of farmers on your speaking engagements this week. We had a series of seminars at National Farm Machinery Show. You kind of recapped the year that we had and, and why what happened happened. Uh, really, what did you see as you're traveling and hearing from farmers about their 2011 crop year? I, you hear wild extremes. Uh, some of the highest yields ever produced on farms and some of the poorest. Uh, unique about 2011, you saw them on the same farm operation, which is uh, quite a bit different than normal, where it's usually just an area. And uh, what we did is kind of recap the year itself and looked at how weather played into it, and in a lot of cases, how weather played into uh, the maturity of the crop. You know, for the first time, we saw some phenomenal yields in June planted corn in parts of the country that shouldn't have happened. Uh, we sent some of the most productive soils in Illinois, for instance, producing under 100 bushel corn. So we kind of laid out in our presentation down here uh, where the crucial times are in corn and growth development and how weather has to be correct at that time period. And for the most part, we're talking about pollination through R3 on corn. Uh, we're talking about early flowering through R5 on beans. And if the farmer knew uh, where his crop was when certain stress weeks took place, he could predict uh, some of the potential losses in that. Uh, caught farmers by surprise, meaning that uh, some of these yield losses were a lot bigger than they anticipated because they weren't maybe paying attention to just what stage the crop was in when it was uh, under serious stress. Sure, so they can't control the weather, but they can control what they know about their crop at that stage of stress. What are some of the lessons learned or maybe where were some of the biggest train wrecks you saw last year? They come from all different directions. Um, nitrogen management was big in some areas because we had such severe nitrogen loss. So. Uh, early spring rains, in some cases anywhere from 9 to 10 plus inches of rain in a month, uh, created a lot of nitrogen issues. So farmers that uh, weren't paying attention to nitrogen and didn't respond accordingly suffered. In some places it was just flat lack of water, and if they didn't diversify um, their flowering windows and stuff like that and got caught at the wrong time, uh, they had you know, too many acres that were trying to get through R1, R3 at the same time, so there wasn't enough diversity there. Some of it was disease, uh, some situations where the disease pressure came in and uh, took out the crop, kind of the last uh, stool of the leg, uh, leg of the stool to break per se, and uh, even though they had water, if they had enough, for instance, Goss's wilt disease, they could have uh, uh, lost most of the yield in that format itself. Hey, thank you, Ken, very much.